There's nothing natural about this so-called recovery because we haven't really recovered. The economy is actually sicker now. And what's really been hurting it was not the disease, but the government's cure. See, here's the problem. When governments around the country ordered businesses to close and people not to go to work, everybody stopped producing. So if you are helping to produce goods, you're not producing the goods. If you are performing services, you stop performing those services. Now, if people aren't productive, well, they need to reduce their consumption because you can't consume stuff that's not produced. But the government didn't want people to stop spending, even though it ordered them to stop working. So what happened was the Federal Reserve just printed up all this money and gave it to businesses, gave it to workers and extended unemployment benefits, sent out all the stimulus money. So you have an economy where we're producing less but everybody wants to spend more. That's not economic growth, that's massive inflation. And what we're seeing now is the byproduct of everybody spending all this money that we just printed, and that's what's boosting the GDP. But this is not a real economy. Our trade deficits are exploding. We've never seen merchandise trade deficits this high. What we've done is we've substituted real economic growth, real goods production for money printing. And we're about to pay the price in terms of an enormous increase in the cost of goods and services. It's going to be like the 1970s, only a much worse economy and much higher inflation. I've been saying it's an inflationary depression, not just stagflation. We got to remember that inflation, by definition, is the expansion of the money supply, right? That is literally what is being inflated. So we had a lot of inflation following the 2008 financial crisis. And I think the initial effect of that inflation was that it prevented prices from going down. Prices were set to fall, which would have been a relief to the economy so that during tough times, the cost of living could have gone down. But the inflation that was created prevented those prices from falling. And so you just don't notice it uh, in that respect, but it was still there. But also what happened was the dollar in 2008, when we had the financial crisis, the dollar was at an all time record low. And if you remember where commodity prices were, oil prices had just moved up to $140 a barrel, all commodities were going way up. And when the financial crisis actually happened, commodity prices collapsed and the dollar rose. And so that was like a buffer and that helped spare us Only on uh, from a more protracted increase in consumer prices. And we were able to rely more heavily on foreign imports during that period where the dollar was strengthening. But fast forward to where we are today, commodities are just starting a new bull market. The dollar is starting a new bear market. And the size of today's deficits dwarf. The government is printing almost 70% of the money it spends. I mean, it's the government is spending, uh, what, $8 trillion almost and not even collecting three and a half trillion in taxes. This is unprecedented. When we started the inflation in 2008, the Fed's balance sheet was maybe seven, eight hundred billion. It's now almost eight trillion. Uh, so we're at a much bigger point. And if you go back to 2008, 2009, the Fed, the, we were borrowing a lot of money, but the Chinese were lending us the money. The Japanese were lending us the money. The Saudis, the Russians, the whole world was lending the U.S. government money. They're not doing that anymore. We have to do it all by ourselves. The Fed is not the buyer of, of last resort. It's the buyer of only resort. So we can't rely on other countries to loan us the money. The Fed has to print the money. So I think it's night and day where we are right now. And I think the Fed, it, it's a false sense of complacency to think that, oh, we dodged the bullet last time. So we're going to dodge it again. Whenever the government spends money, it has to deprive the free market of those resources. Right? It's, it's not the taxation that's the problem. It is the spending. Government spending is effectively taxation. So once the government decides to spend money, the question is, how do we pay for it? Now, the most obvious way is, you know, we send the government our money through an income tax or a sales tax, whatever it is. But if they don't have the political guts to ask the Americans to pay for all the spending that they're delivering, then they ask the Federal Reserve to print money. But that doesn't mean we get the government for free. It just means the government is robbing us of the purchasing power of our money. And that's what's happening. The government is creating money, putting it in the economy, giving it to people to spend. These people are bidding up prices. And that's what's driving the GDP. It's higher prices 
and more spending as we are producing less, right? That's why you see this enormous uh, trade deficits. The Federal Reserve is asking us to believe that what we're seeing is just transitory, that it's gonna, it's gonna blow over and it's, it's nothing that should concern us. But this is exactly what the Federal Reserve said in 2005, 2006 about subprime. They told us, ignore what's happening in the subprime mortgage market. Only it's contained. Positive. It's not going to be a problem for the mortgage market. It's not a problem for housing. It's not a problem for the economy. Just ignore it. It's no big deal. Well, the Federal Reserve was completely wrong about the subprime market being contained. They're now just as wrong, if not more so, more so about inflation being transitory. We are at the beginning of a huge escalation in the cost of living. And they are throwing gasoline on the fire right now uh, by continuing to spend more money paid for by the printing press. Even though they're talking about raising taxes on the rich, the amount of revenue that those higher taxes are actually going to raise is going to pale in comparison to the money that they want to spend. And that particular type of taxation that's targeted uh, at the rich, what ends up happening is the rich don't spend less, they invest less. And investing is what drives economic growth because investments is what creates you know, productivity, businesses, jobs. That doesn't come from what rich people spend. It comes from what rich people don't spend. But if the government takes that money instead, it depresses the economy. So we're going to depress the economy at the same time we're printing up a bunch of money. And the government has created such a perverse incentive you have so many Americans that have left the workforce. They have no desire to return to their jobs because the government has given them a better deal. It is more lucrative not to work than to go and get a job. And of course, it's far more enjoyable to have a vacation and get paid more than you would get if you returned to work. So the government is paying people not to produce and then giving them money to buy the stuff that they didn't produce. This is going to be an inflationary apocalypse. And you have to realize that when the government is taxing corporations, they're not really taxing corporations. They're taxing the shareholders of those corporations. So it's the people that own the corporations that pay that tax. Then they pay a tax again when they collect a dividend or they get a capital gain. So if we are going to raise both the corporate tax and the tax on dividends and capital gains, that people receive after they've already paid the corporate tax, the percentage of total income that is being confiscated by the US government will be well in excess of 50%. I mean, you're talking about levels that are confiscatory. I mean, if you go back to the days of feudalism, when you had lords and you had serfs, what made you a serf was that you only got to keep 75% of what you produced. The Lord took 25%, and we called that feudalism, serfdom. It was very oppressive. Well, compare that to what we have now. I mean, most American businessmen, entrepreneurs, would love to be able to keep 75% of what they earn, because very few people do, and now the government wants to take even more. People are gonna spend more time avoiding income than generating income, and it's the activity to generate income that drives the economic train. That's the goose that lays the golden eggs. Because if I want to produce income, I have to provide consumers with goods and services that improve their lives, and I have to employ other people to help me do that. So the minute the government you know, stamps out the desire to make more money Only because the government the is taking so much of what's being produced, all that economic activity goes away. And even though they keep saying, hey, these, ta these tax increases are targeted at the rich, so if you make less than $400,000, you don't have to worry about it. Well, maybe you end up losing your job because the person who is going to employ you no longer has the desire or the capital to provide you with a job. What's happening now, and the, our get out of jail free card, is that even though you have a lot of Americans who aren't working, you have a lot of people in other countries who are working, let's say China, right? You have all these people who are going to work, they're in factories, they're producing all this stuff, and then they load it up on container ships and they send it to America. So even though Americans aren't producing, we still get to consume because we live off the fruits of the labor of people in China and other parts of the world. Now, the reason that Chinese are willing to give us their products that, you know, they actually had to use real resources to create, they needed capital, they needed labor. The reason they're willing to give us this is because we're giving them dollars. 
But all the dollar is is a piece of paper. It doesn't have any actual real value like all the consumer goods that we're getting from China. They're just getting IOUs. Now, when the Chinese and the rest of the world lose confidence in the future purchasing power of those IOUs, they're not going to want to accept them anymore in exchange for their stock. And then what's going to happen is you're going to see the dollar really start to fall on foreign exchange markets. And that's when the inflation chickens are really going to come home to roost in a way that it's impossible for the government to ignore the reality or just point to a doctrine CPI and try to say, oh, prices aren't going up. And then this is going to become a real problem because I think the next real recession is going to be triggered by inflation. As the costs go up so much, businesses start firing people because they need to stay in business. And consumers, even though they're spending a lot of money, they're spending it on food. They're spending it on energy. So they don't have money left over to buy other stuff. And so they have to stop buying other stuff. And now all the people who earn their living selling that other stuff, well, they lose their jobs. And now we're in a recession that is caused by inflation. And now what does the Federal Reserve do? Because their normal prescription for a recession is to create more inflation, print more money. But if you have an inflation problem, how do you pour gasoline on that problem by creating even more inflation? You can't. So the Fed is in a box that they can't get out of. Help by spreading this message. Share with your friends, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn on notifications to stay updated.